Okay, so this is a video to go and disprove everyone who is saying, oh no, this is fake, or it doesn't work, or just concerned in general. So I'm planning on it. That's me. That is how you pronounce my name. And I will be demonstrating the jump scare program I made because people like insert overrated OP character are rather concerned. Okay, so I already have it installed, so I'm not going to worry about that. So basically what it is, is a Windows application that installs to your hard drive, wherever you want to let it install. It's actually not a Windows application, it's just a jar file. You can ignore that one, that one doesn't matter. So it's just a jar file. So all you would do to launch this jar file is you create a shortcut to launch.bat in the startup folder. Launch.bat just says start C Windows CMD WS script dot exe. This is the built-in Windows scripting engine. And then it calls hide cmd dot vbs and hide cmd dot vbs calls and so begins dot bat. Now hide cmd dot vbs. This here is a file that someone on the internet whose name I forget showed me how to make. Essentially what it does is it's a script that when run hides the command line. Because normally if I was to just launch this program it would pop up a command line window that says waiting 26,000 seconds press any key to continue. And that's quite obvious. Someone's going to see that and they're going to stop it. But when you launch it through the launch.bat, which then launches it through hide cmd vbs, and then hide cmd vbs launches and so begins dot bat, you push launch.bat, you get a quick little pop up, which most of the time you won't even notice because Windows is starting up. And now there's nothing. There's no signs, nothing's going on. So now we go over here. The only way I found that you can tell this is running at all is you come over down into here in Task Manager. If you see this doohickey right here, it is in fact running, and it's going to get ya. So we're just going to kill that, and that kills the application. It's now no longer running. And one other thing you might want to do is you might want to go in here and kill any console hosts you see, or command lines. You might. That should kill the program, but I have jumped myself before. Now if you're running on Windows 8 and decide you don't want this program to run anymore, all you have to do to stop it is you go to the startup folder, you scroll down to launch.bat, and you hit disabled. Done. It's gone now. It's not going to scare you ever again. So I'm just going to enable that again. And hopefully I don't get jumped during this video. That would be rather embarrassing. Okay. And then what you're going to want to do, if you're running on Windows 7, I have my nice little emulated start menu here. You would scroll down to, let's see, where is it now? You scroll down to startup, you'd open the startup folder, and you'd delete the shortcut that's there. Because I'm not running Windows 7, there isn't a shortcut there. But that's how you get rid of it. So now, someone's going to say, well, what if the installer has a virus? Well, I can tell you, I made the installer. It doesn't have a virus. And here's the cool part. If you want to add your own image, all you have to do is replace this image with large.jpg of any image you want. It doesn't matter how big it is, it will stretch it for you. Now, if you want to change the sound file, that's a little more technical, you have to open the jar file with some kind of archiving program. I like 7-zip. And then you would go here, and you would only have to swap out d underscore dead dot wav. 
The large JPG is in here as well, but it doesn't work from inside the jar file because I am a bad programmer. Now all this other stuff here, I'm not going to get into right now, but this is also because I'm a bad programmer. This is how many files it takes me to display an image and a sound, because I am bad. So if you want to know what's in those files, you can decompile them. I have no idea how to do that, but you can figure it out. Or I could post a source code if you're really, really interested, but I'd rather not. This Windows icon here, on Windows 8, doesn't work, but on Windows 7, we'll replace the icon in the startup folder with a Windows icon, so that people say, oh, this looks important, let's not delete it. Okay, let's see. So now then, we'll go over to my lovely clean desktop and turn my icons back on. Oof, not clean anymore. So this installer... Where is it now? Ah, here it is. So this installer. You just click install. You push next. This isn't actually a license agreement. I was just too lazy to put a proper readme file in. So that's the readme file. Hit I agree. Tell it where you want it to install to. This is a default route. Hit next. Let it do its thing. And then you can view the readme if you want, which is just the same file again. Now the default path that you're going to want to take will be local disk C, program files x86. And you're going to want to go down here to F, and it will be under flash code. And then there's jump scare, and here's your data. So like I said, all you have to do is change this picture, and you can have any picture you'd like. Now I don't know if other formats work. I know that JPEG files work, and that WAV files work. That's all I know. I haven't tested it. So there is actually an uninstaller here. The uninstaller will clean up all the stuff and remove it for you, so you don't have to worry about that either. Now I am this batch file here, the instant.bat, what this one does is it's echo off, which makes it not spam console, and then basically just plays the jump scare instantly. So we'll get to that in a second. And headphones warning on that, it hurts. So the and so it begins bat over here. Echo off again. Echo off again to, um, this is an old version of it, apparently. Hey, you guys know my name now, not like that was hard to figure out. Okay. So echo off keeps it from spamming chat. Then there's a start command, which basically begins a loop. And this is the timer I'm using. This sets the variable timeout to a random integer plus 300 or 3600. Now, why 3600? 3600 makes it take a minimum of half an hour. So, at minimum, it will take half an hour and one second. At maximum, it's 28 hours and 0.77 minutes. I don't know, you can do the math there. So, here's an alternate format to that. So, you can read into that if you would like. And then you have timeout, which is the, pop, the wait command. And then percent timeout percent, which is the variable we defined up there. And we start java.jar jumpscare.jar, which is our jar file over there again. And then we go back to start. So after it's jumped you, it will automatically loop back to start, pick a new random number, and then wait that amount of time and jump you again later. So the reason we put a file in startup is that this program will automatically launch itself. And in fact, I should turn it off again before I scare myself. So that is enabled, but it's still running over here. And like I said, there it is right there. You gotta be careful, because that will come to get you. And just make sure it's not running anymore. You can tell I get lost on my own computer easily. 
Oh, look at that. Still running. Nice. So you want to kill both the CMBs. And that way, you won't get jumped. Okay, so now that we have that killed, we are going to do the instant jump scare. So I say again, if you're wearing headphones, this is your warning. It does, in fact, hurt. So I'm just going to take mine off. And there we go, we have just done the Golden Freddy jump scare. And like I said, you can take any old image and throw it in there. So if we want to be jump scared, we'll just rename this to large1.jpg. And we'll bring this one in here. Of course, if you install to a system directory, it's going to ask you for system permission. So if you don't have that kind of permission, install it elsewhere. So now we're going to do it again. And we have a whole new image stretched to fit. Be careful with your image proportions, it will stretch it to fit the screen, and that may not work out well. But yeah, there we go. I'm just going to drag that back to my desktop. And now, if for some reason you don't specify an image, if you don't have an image in there, I'll just show you what it does. That was the wrong button. Okay. It still plays the sound, but you get a white screen, and it spams the crap out of command line. Just a heads up. Oh, and it's perfectly possible for more than one instance to be running at a time. So if I just spam this a few times. And we go over to command line. I now have three different instances, all with a different random number, that are going to jump me. And that number, once again, can be anywhere between a 30 minutes, or it could be 28 hours. And once it completes, it will pick a new number. So we're just going to kill these off again. And I don't think these are related, but I'm going to kill them anyway. Fairly good piece of advice. If you don't know what it is, don't touch it. Okay. Well, that should be everything. If you have ev any more questions, comments, concerns, queries, theories, I like pie. I did leave a readme file. It does have a it also X and Mac. Like I said in my description, I don't make launch won't have C to test on. So if you do make your own timing script, please do share it. I would like to get those. The jar itself will work on Mac and Linux. You might have to fiddle around a bit to get it work on Mac. But it will work. So the jump scare jar itself will work on Mac and Linux. But you will have to figure out your own timing script. Okay. Well, that should be everything. So yeah, thanks.